Culling and curating your work has been an issue for every artist since the dawn of time. Take Vivian Meyer for example, she never published any of her work purely because she never gave out her best images, it wasn't until after she died that her work was finally recognised and now she's considered one of the greats. So today's video is all about how I cull and curate my own images before the editing phase. Doing this not only saves me a lot of time when I edit, but also helps me to choose the best images with the best composition, the best focus, and the best camera settings. And when it comes to portraits, this process helps me pick the sharpest photo, then move on to the next scene or composition without wasting any time. Now, I've been using a software to do this for the last four years called Narrative, who is sponsoring today's video. But it's definitely not a new tool for me and I'm excited to dive deep and share my experience and my process on how I cull, curate and show my best work. Now before we jump onto the computer there is a link in the description down below for full access to narrative for free for 30 days and no credit card required okay. So you just enter your email, download narrative for free and after 30 days if it's for you that's great. If not, no payment needed and no hard feelings, of course. So let's jump onto the computer and show how I pick my best images, how I use narrative for data management, and how you can ship straight into Lightroom or use AI to edit your images. All right, guys, so this is the main opening page that you'll see when you first open narrative. And if you scroll down, you can see that I use narrative for all my work, whether that's thumbnails, my portrait stuff, and even some family photos here as well. You won't see any of these for the first time because you haven't used Use narrative you will just see this window here so if you click this you can drag and drop a folder of your images or you can just choose a folder of images here you go through your computer and you select the photos that you want and you will be presented with two options on the left is cull only and then pre-edit later or you can just jump straight into the pre-edit which is narratives ai preset if you've already culled your work so we need to cull our work first so we click on cull plus pre-edit and this is the first page of narrative and what I want to do before we dive into how I cull is I just want to show the layout and the different layouts you can achieve. So at the moment this is called the loop view and this is my main layout which I use meaning that if I scroll down it goes through every single image in chronological order. Up here on the left you have something called the grid view and you'll notice throughout today's video before you click on anything narrative gives you the short cut key so if we click on G that will enter into the grid view or you can click it and this is great as I have learned all of the keyboard shortcuts from the last few years of using these as every time I go to click something I'm prompted so this grid view will show all of your photos similar to the library view in Lightroom and I use this just to check that all of my photos that I've taken have been imported and copied over to my SSD drive so I quickly go through and just check that everything is there moving along we've got the scene view so up here if we click here or if we use that shortcut of s we move into the scene view and what this does is similar to the loop view that we've seen before but you'll notice if you push the down arrow key it will scroll through different images in the same composition so say if i want to go through and i like this one the best i'll click a one star which i'll get to shortly and then i can move on to the next scene by hitting the right arrow key and now if i scroll down you can see that it's a completely different composition and you've got one out of 12 images here to select from pressing down you can go through and you can select I want that one once you're happy with that composition there's no need to go through the rest of these images all that you need to do is click the right arrow key and you'll see that it changes the composition or changes the scene and then lastly up here is the survey mode now what it's done is grouped all of those scenes into a survey mode so now you can see all of those images next to each other if you go up here and you just select the one image it will clear that selection and this is what I use when I'm culling and curating my work so all I'm doing is I'm holding the command key and I'm going to click four photos for this demonstration and now with these four photos selected you can see which one is the best composition and which one you feel your eye is naturally drawn to now narrative is mainly for culling before editing but I actually use this survey mode when I'm trying to curate my work even more so I'm starting a print store and I'm putting all of my edited work that I've ever edited 
into narrative and I'm culling and curating my edited work and I've been using this survey mode to see which image I think would look better as a print and this has just been a complete game changer for myself. Okay lastly in the survey mode if you go up here and you click on this face icon it will zoom into all of the faces and you can now see which one is the sharpest and which one has the best facial expression. You'll also notice that down here on the left you get two scores and it's giving you a facial expression so it says eyes are fully open and it's also giving you a focus score which we will be getting into very shortly so i'm going to go up here and just exit out of survey mode and i'm going to go back into the loop mode as this is my mode of preference and then finally you have a fit to scale which is going to show the complete composition or you can click up here or hit the space bar and this will zoom into your image to check your focus or if you hit the space bar again that's going to zoom out and if you click it will zoom into a product that you want to see and obviously I shot this at the wrong aperture because this is out of focus. You can also change the zoom amount here as well so you can go more zoom or you can go less. That right there is the different layout on viewing your photos for culling. Now if we move over to the right here this is where we have more layout options as well. So I'm going to start with this one which is the crop panel and this is really great say if you want to change your composition to something like that and you want a more creative crop and then you have a similar composition you can have the full crop that allows you just to have the two images in one and just an FYI this is not cropping the overall image so when you import it into Lightroom you're not losing all of this data this still is a raw image so when you import it into Lightroom you will see the complete full resolution and you can adjust this crop later so you can approximately crop here now and you can fine-tune your crop later you can also change the aspect ratio to 4x3 or whatever aspect ratio you want you can can lock or unlock the aspect ratio all similar to Lightroom and also you can rotate your images okay moving up here on the left you've got your shot info panel and I love this because it will show me my file name the date and the time that I captured it also show me the model of the camera that I shot the lens that I shot the image on but most importantly it shows me my camera setting so I use this because sometimes I'll bump my auto ISO and then my shutter speed will be too low if you click show more you obviously get more detail here as well and then moving up here you've got the close-up panel so similar to hitting the space bar by zooming you can actually have a close-up panel here as well you can zoom into products here or you can zoom into the face or you can use what I like to use and this is the close-up face panel so this will just zoom into the face and this is not zooming into a certain percentage this is just allowing you to see the full face in this box here and this right here is my culling layout I like to be in the loop view because I like to go through every single photo for a portrait session like this. I'll use the scene views when I'm culling a wedding. I like to have the face close up model here and I also like to have my shot info to check my camera settings. And like I said before, if you scroll through here, the face is always gonna fit in this box in disregards to the composition so we've got a close-up composition here if we scroll up to a more wider composition we still get the same size face as well as here as well i love this tool this is probably the greatest feature about narrative now i quickly touched on this before in this close-up face feature you also have a score so eight is great focus and then you also have an expression score which is eyes barely open and this is all in regards to the filters on this culling software so what you can actually do is you click up here and you can filter by focus so anything of an image focus of six and above is generally where I lay and that's my general ballpark or acceptable sharpness sometimes I will click a four or a five image if I really do like the composition but generally I click on this and now this will only show images that have a focus score of six up to ten so if we go back here and we start scrolling Scrolling through all these images you'll notice down here in the bottom right on this close-up panel that all of these images have a focus score of six or above and then to clear that you just go up here all images with all focus score and now that you'll see all images that are out of focus as well as perfectly sharp the next one next to this is the facial expressions or the pick rankings which they call potential picks which is in a blue icon and then you have show unlikely picks which is in a gray and then of course you've got red 
red, which is undesirable picks. So if we click on this potential picks, you'll notice, and we go back here and we select a focus score of say eight and above, this will only show images that have a focus score of eight and above. And if we scroll through here, it will still show when the eyes are closed, but it is using AI to figure out if this is a desirable pick and a good facial expression. So if we scroll down, we're only seeing the best images that are in focus, as well as good facial expressions. If we go up here and we deselect the blue and then select the gray, now we're only seeing images that are sharp, but not the best facial expressions. You can see that we got here in front of the face here as well. If we deselect the gray and we only show undesirable desirable picks and you start scrolling up you can see that we're getting some mid blinks or half blinks we're also getting here in front of the face that's a mid blink again we're getting mid blinks here as well so generally i just leave it on blue and gray as sometimes there are some images that i really do like quirky facial expressions for weddings i just leave this on eight plus and then blue because weddings are a big gallery and i like to see everyone's eyes open or a good facial expression and i want all of my images sharp okay moving along and this is where you've got your star ratings and this is in correspondence to lightroom so in lightroom you do have a star rating of one to five as well as red to purple when i'm going through my images i'm going through and i'm always using the one key i'm looking at the main composition i'm looking here and i'm also glancing at my camera settings and i just go through and i'm just picking the images that i like the best and then what i end up doing is i end up having around 50 or so so images in the one star rating I will deselect all of the images so now we're only seeing images from one to five and I'll go through and I'll delete some of the images that I don't want by hitting the zero key and you notice that this number will start to fade you can also use number two or you can use star rating number three and then you can only just see those star ratings here if you want to rate an image like this and you want to get a red star you just hit the six key and then you can come up here and then you'll just see with that star rating as well as red so just like Lightroom you've got multiple ways to organize your photos all right so moving on here in the camera aisle you can actually filter your images by camera serial number so I was shooting on the Sony a7 IV I was also shooting on an unreleased camera video on that coming soon and I also had two x2ds on me at the same time so if I just want to see the a7 IV photos I can do that or I can go back and click all cameras and now that's going to show all the cameras that I was shooting with. Similarly, you can use the lenses. So if I only want to see images that I shot on my 28 to 70 or vice versa on the 55 millimeter. And then you also have the folder structure up here. So if you have your own personal folder structure, you can filter by folder structure as well. So that in a nutshell is how I cull and curate my images. Now I want to show you how I actually take these images and import them straight into Lightroom without having to open Lightroom. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so what I do is I unselect all of the undesirable picks. I'll come into the grid view and then I can see all the images that I've selected. I'll click on an image and I go Command A and I'll come up here to Ship plus edit. This first section, you don't have to do it the way that I do it. You can actually go with image rating. So you can actually select all the images that you want. So if you just want to import 44 images with the one star, you can do that. Up here, you've got open and edit programs. So you can use Lightroom Classic, you can use Lightroom CC, you can use Capture One, Photoshop, or you can choose your own software. And then down here, you can pick from your last used or you can use pick from an existing catalog which you go and find on your computer or you can actually create a new catalog which i'm going to do today and i'm just going to call this narrative for today's video and i'm going to choose a location to save it you can also move and copy files so you can select copy or move files and then up here is the pre-edit for lightroom and this is narratives ai profiles so you can actually click this and it will pre-edit all of your photos and then import them into Lightroom. And this will not only adjust the color and the contrast of your image, it will also correct the white balance and the exposure, which is huge if you wanna get a very consistent look across the board. And you can also train your own AI preset. So if you do have a catalog of over 3000 images, Narrative will build a AI preset and they're not just doing the color and the contrast, they're also learning how 
how you slide your exposure and also how you like your white balance to get a very consistent look. So for this video, we have got our Lightroom Classic. We've selected a new catalog and then I'm just gonna click ship 20 images. So this is what you're gonna see when you first open Lightroom after you've shipped from narrative into Lightroom. And you'll notice that all these photos are unticked, but some of them are ticked. That means that narrative have flagged all the images that you wanna import. So all you need to do down here is trust the process and click import. And now that you'll see, it has imported those 20 photos here. So once I've imported my photos into Lightroom, I edit the photos like normal. For me, I use my ASCIA soft preset. I select command A, which selects all the photos. I go down here, I check all and deselect the white balance and exposure and I synchronize and now all of these photos are edited. So if you do like the way that I edit my photos, I do sell Lightroom presets. They are linked in the description down below. And if you want to get a discount off your first order, make sure you sign up to my photography and Lightroom newsletter for a discount off your first order. All right guys, so that is how I cull and curate my images before I import them into Lightroom. And this process is so important as culling in Lightroom is extremely slow. It's also extremely inaccurate. And if you have a large Lightroom catalog, your computer just slows down. So small Lightroom catalogs, cull before you import into Lightroom. Thank you to Narrative for A, creating such a fantastic software and B, sponsoring today's video. They're also a Kiwi company employed by Kiwis and run by Kiwis. So you'll be supporting New Zealand. And if you do want to see my full editing breakdown where I go into more depth on narrative, definitely go check out this video right here where I show my full editing workflow for my portraiture. Otherwise, subscribe guys, like the video, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.